signal the beginning of a journey as a group of fourth and fifth graders step back into a time not so long ago. December 7, 1941, when Japanese planes dropped bombs on Wahewa, a plantation town next to Wheeler Army Airfield. This key moment in World War II brought great changes to the people of this small community. As today's students examine and relive that time, they discover as much about themselves as a history of their community. The December 7, 1941 project forged a partnership between the Honolulu Theater for Youth, Wahewa Elementary School staff and students, Wahewa community members, and local artists. Led by HTY drama education staff, Daniel A. Kellen II and Tara Ziegler, fourth and fifth graders collected oral histories and developed them into living history presentations. The students were actively engaged throughout this intense process of exploration, taking full ownership of the creation, performance, and learning processes. They conducted interviews, selected which oral histories to explore, studied music and movement, and finally devised short plays which they shared in performance with their peers, families, and the community. The project offered students the chance to discover, appreciate, and explore stories from their culturally diverse backgrounds, preserving family stories and history, enhanced their oral and written communication skills, brought families, the community, and the school together in celebration of their children, encourage students to see the community as a place of learning. Well, I see that this play or uh, this history project was really interesting and uh, learning for schools such as Waiwa and for many other schools who really want to learn about history. And I think that, um, you know, uh, it's having fun when you're doing a project because sometimes history reports are kind of boring. So this one was really fun. So like you're learning and um, having fun at the same time. <laughs> the project began with a visit to Pearl Harbor. The journey across the harbor engaged the students intellectually and emotionally, giving them a tangible introduction to the events of December 7, 1941. Conversations with Pearl Harbor survivors put the distant idea of Hawaii under siege into perspective. They began to see how traumatic, shocking, and life-changing that day truly was. They learned a little about the world in which another group of children once lived. It was good that we um, even got to go to Pearl Harbor. Well, to the Arizona Memorial uh -huh. to meet those um, veterans. Right. Yeah. So it gave them a different perspective, right. and then they met the people in Wahiwa who yeah. were just community members. Right. So it gave them different perspectives yeah, about the war. And so some of them even wrote, um, we shouldn't have wars because all of this happens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Personal interviews make this whole project direct and unique. The interview process enabled students to share in the world of the informants, informants who themselves were once the age of these students. 
The students learned and practiced how to conduct interviews. They explored and discussed how to develop questions and carry out effective interviews by conducting mock interviews with fellow students and the HTY drama instructors. Last year, Honolulu Theatre for Youth asked me to become an interviewer, and I have been interviewing survivors of December 7th. And the thing that is most important to me that I have learned is that when you ask somebody a question, you are honoring them, and you are telling them that they are valuable. And the people that I've talked to have indeed become more valuable to me. To make a good interview, the interviewer has a topic around which the questions are focused. Learning to develop and ask questions became a skill that students later applied to other subjects as well. All inquiry and research requires the ability to ask effective and penetrating questions. Let's hear one follow-up question. Hey, that one. Frustrates, I mean frustrates. Follow-up question. What was the first thing you did? What was the first thing I did when? First thing I did when I climbed up the wall? As soon as I got up onto the wall, I just started looking around to see what I could see. Then the second thing was I just started climbing up the wall as fast as I could. Is that all you see when the clouds separated? Is that all I saw with the cloud separated? Yes. Uh, yeah, what? Uh, that's not, not such a good question? Why was that? Because only one answer. Because I only gave one word answer. How about we change that question? Is that all you saw to make it a good question? You have an idea? Tell me about all you saw. Tell me about all you saw? Okay, there's a way. Somebody else, did you have an idea how to change the question? What do you see? Okay. He's asking, is that all you saw? So maybe, what, what did you see or what else did you see? Good. What did you see? What did you see? Okay. So that is that all? You know, we want to think about how we change that. Good. These are some good, these are some good follow-up questions. Past experience has taught HTY that arranging and coordinating the interviews is important for success. The oral history informants need the time to prepare. Some are nervous about speaking to a class of children. The students, too, need time to focus their questions and the interview. Y. York, HTY playwright in residence, conducted the first interviews with each of the informants. From those interviews, she developed a list of topics and information specific to each informant. These lists help the students build questions around the particular experiences of the informant that would visit their classroom. The students then conducted their own interviews, uncovering engaging and unique stories that were each a part of that fateful day in Wahiwa's history. Through this personal process, the informant's stories become common property of all the students. I just leave this open for any questions that you have. Okay. Yes? What happened during the, um, their World War II? World War II? World War II? Well, in World War II, I was your age. I was 11 years old, and I was uh, going to, it was a Sunday, Sunday morning, December 7th, and I was uh, going to church, and I went, I arrived at church about 7 o'clock in the morning, and uh, church didn't start till about 9, but the kids always went early to play around in this, the area down there, and we used to play marbles and, and all different games in there before church was sun started. And uh, so basically what I knew about the war at that time, at that age, I really didn't know that there was a war going on. Uh, we were all playing marbles and airplanes were flying and, and the noises were going on right outside of Wheeler's Hill. And uh, they were dropping uh, bomb smoke was coming up, but we didn't think about war because we had no idea what it was, what it was all about. But uh, we found out later. You know. so they were very reluctant to interview those senior citizens, so people who were involved in December 7th. However, after they met them, interviewed them, and learned their stories, it became part of them too. And then, after they acted that out, and then whenever they saw those senior citizens, it was wonderful. They would hug them and make them part of their lives, too. So, it was wonderful. It went both ways, yeah? Because they felt like, the older ones felt like 
these children really listen to them. Yeah? So it was really good for them. Increasing evidence suggests that stories play a key role in our children's development as communicators, readers, and writers. A key aspect of that learning is learning to share our own stories. So, we never ended the story. What could he do? Oh, he could have oh. got a job. Could have had a job. He tried to find a job. He couldn't get it. He needs to win this fight with a competition for 100 bucks. Borrow a bike from a friend. Okay, maybe borrow a bike from a friend. Maybe into the junk fight. Okay. Maybe he can repair his old bike, then why would he buy a new bike? <laughs> or repaired it enough to win the race? Yeah. That's interesting. Children are thrilled to discover the surprising stories in their own neighborhoods. The elderly man next door tells how, when he was a boy, he saw a Japanese Zero airplane crash in his backyard. Suddenly, the backyard is more impressive than a field of grass and vegetables. The yard, the neighborhood, the whole community becomes places for discovery and learning. By sharing stories, students put their lives into perspective. The stories of others validate their own lives and experiences. By preserving such stories, family, heritage, and culture can live forever. Drama challenges children to get involved mentally, emotionally, and physically. The process demands that its participants imagine, take risks, problem solve, and understand. Students find themselves developing communication, evaluation, and leadership skills. All the students become involved, and they work together to help and learn from each other. Hi, what do you remember about Tableau? That it's a shape. Okay, it's a shape. So what else do you remember, Rob? It's a shape that shows action. Okay, a shape that shows action and feelings. Kind of sounds like an auto image. It's like a picture that everybody works together big in one. Aha! Okay, so it's just like an auto-image. A frozen image that shows action and feeling. But it's teamwork. You guys all working together to make that picture. It's an ensemble effort. That's right. Okay, so the tableau that you will make, the frozen picture showing action and feeling that you will make, is of the beginning of our story. There. You guys to the house. And in the end, you show the past of what you are doing. You are so happy. 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 You are they came to understand how those techniques would help them create short plays from the oral history stories. Um, we had fun and we also learned things like um, who attacked and who would stuff. And we also learned how to put things together. You how say to things? Make, like put. parts together, how to make a whole okay. play. And we also learned how to work together as a team. Okay, good. We also learned that how they um, did stuff back then, in the past. And we learned um, the history of the war. What was the word for today? Um, improvisation. Improvisation. Improvisation means? To make we just to make it up. Just as you go along. Make it up as you go along. So what I want you to do right now with this practice is just make it up as you go along. Oh, red! That's a red! Good. Yeah.
know what they're doing. No, because there's a Maybe spy. No, wait, 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 wait. Don't assume anything. You know the story. But if somebody didn't know the story, the car could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be on a road. The car could be in the field. It could be on a freeway. It could be on a dirt road. It could be on the driveway. How do we know? How can we find out what's going on? It's by the words that we speak. What do the plants want? Water. How are they trying to get it? What do they do before they do the lake? They pull the thing off the lake. Right. In small groups, the students chose the oral histories they wished to work on, then brainstormed ways to best explore and extend those stories. So the fourth scene, where are they? The boys drive. On the rock, fishing. They're in the fishing, and what, what happens to them? They, they catch plenty fish. fish. They catch plenty fish. <laughs> well, okay. fish are strong, but they cannot fish um, Yeah. But they cannot? Because, they because why? Because they got so much fish. So maybe that's the fourth scene is they're trying to leave, but they got so much fish they're having a hard time getting through the barbed wire. Yes, and they do. They have to find new ways to get the fish through and stuff. So they chop them up. They chop what? Chop them up, is that what you're saying? They could be throwing them over. What else could they be doing? They can take them on barbed wire. They can um, grab roll person, grab a bucket, and they will put water in it. No water, but like this. Throw the fish and try making so the like, they basketball. And they try oh, they're like playing basketball, so the fish are being thrown into the bucket. I think the one part is to go under the barbed wire, and then they pass the basket full of fish. Okay, so we got a kind of an idea here. We got uh, Mr. Oda and his friends. Okay, so they're at home deciding what to do. Okay. Over a three-week period, the group supplied the drama techniques they learned earlier to shape the stories into original scenes and short plays that captured the heart of the oral histories. Now, boys, how are you going to tell us that you're a fairy? We're going to make a, uh, like a little motor sound. A sound of a motor? What other sounds do we need? Oh, wow. Mm. Danae? Uh, ocean sound. We need the sound of the water. Okay, so Kui, you go ahead and be the sound of the motor. And Shane, you go ahead and be the sound of the water. Gentlemen, start your engines. Show us the fairy. Ready? Three, two, one, action. Okay, but take them serious. Fairies don't giggle. You know what would help me? Can you guys give your arms like waves? Since oral histories come from personal memories, it was important that the students not try to recreate them exactly. Instead, they used them as jumping off points to explore human behavior as they recognized it. The play building process became an intimate and in-depth study of communication and human relationships. Okay. What is, okay, so you're talking about going fishing, and then you're asking about Mark. Why are you asking about Mark? Because, um, He's not following us in his stuff. What happened to the stuff about we're lost? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So which is first, Mark or lost? Lost. All right. So you two are coming on and you're talking about you're being excited about doing fishing and you're lost. Yeah. All right. So what I want to do is come walk in here, walk around like you're lost, and I want you to end up standing this way facing toward the audience. All right? All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. Time out, what's uh, the first thing you talked about? Oh, no. Oh, we're putting this in an order. No. Fishing, right? Oh, come on, let's go fishing. Yes, we're going, no, we're not, come on, let's go fishing. We already decided in scene one we're going fishing. Now we're in scene two, so what do we want to do? <laughs> How do we get up? I want to get on the other side of the bar, but... Okay, good, and then you get lost. Good, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Come on, I want to get on the other side of the bar, but there's so many fish waiting for me. Yeah, I want to get more than you, I no, it's more than you. Where's the bar way? Okay, show me. You're walking around for it. Walking around for it. And where do you end up? But you gotta talk the whole time. Maybe it's over this way. No, I saw it, it over on, that way. Is it on that side? Is yeah. It on that side. But you do it while you're talking. You don't walk, talk, walk, 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 and then no. talk, talk, talk. Do the same both at the same time. Ready? Same from the beginning. Three, two, one, go. Come on, let's go. I want to get on the other side of the bar bar. There's so many fish waiting for me. Yeah, me too. 
Where's where's the barbed wire? I don't know. Is it that way? way? Well, it's not. not on that side. Oh, here it is. Already adept at using role play to understand their place in the world, creating and acting out all history stories gave the students a chance to think intimately and creatively about real behavior and issues. Music and movement are powerful forms that help students communicate beyond the use of words. Movement helps them focus on the meaning of gesture and action. As they coordinate physical movement, they learn to depend on each other, and a sense of ensemble grows. Music taps other skills, including the ability to create and shape the mood of a scene. The name of this instrument is called Hu Ohe. Hu is the name of the trumpet. Ohe is bamboo. Remember Ohe? The Wahewa students learned to play two particular types of musical instruments, the Japanese taiko drum and the Hawaiian nose flute. These instruments offer a range of expression through volume, texture, and mood, and accessible challenges to the students. A select number of the students participated in workshops led by Chizuku Endo of Kenny Endo Taiko and Calvin Ho, a local musician and artisan. Let's go to the second pattern, which is like the ending of the first pattern. It's going to be... Three dodo sisters and a don do. Remember that? The last don do stays down by the drum. Okay, here we go. Ready? Hajime! So! so. Tao Dance Theatre founder and performer Peter Rockford Espiritu introduced a range of possibilities for expression through movement workshops with all the students. So let's start with the guys. Yeah. Okay. Um, can we co construct an airplane as a group? Okay. Can you try that? Let yeah. me see. One more group. All, all five of you connected to make one big plane. Can you do that? One whole, one whole group. So if you have a middle of the plane, Brandon. like the front, oh, two wings, and maybe a tail. Can I have that? Oh, okay. Figure it out. Oh, okay. So who's the front? Me. Okay, here's the front. Who's going to connect to the sides to be the wings? One Me. wing. I see one wing. Okay, I see another wing. Now the center. You're the center. All right, usually. And then you're the tail. Where's your tail? That's cool. That's cool. That's good. I'll take that. And there's some kind of center thing. Show me a, a high center thing. Like, I don't know. Anyone can help them? Maybe a shape? Yes? Like this? Or, okay, that's cool. That's cool. I'll take that. Now let's move the whole plane this way. Connect. Where's your wing? Turn. The students took the skills they acquired from these workshops and applied them to their developing scenes and short plays. Students need to develop a habit of performing. A clear break between the creation of the plays and the rehearsal process gave the students time to concentrate on performance habits and to take full control of their developing performance. Even though it was a mistake, you follow. Now, if that happened, what should you guys do? Just keep on going. Just keep on going. You know what you're doing. You can make, you can still go on. Okay? So now do we know what the real one is, Anthony? Okay, go for it. Throughout the rehearsals, however, the students were encouraged to continue exploring and experimenting, getting them used to creating on the spot without interrupting the flow of performance.
As the project neared its end, the final rehearsals brought together the classes who had been working separately. These intense, joyous rehearsals led directly to the excitement of the time they would perform as one group. workshop introduced parents to the ongoing process, helping them understand how the project was about a way of learning and sharing accomplishments. At the workshop, students introduced material they had already experienced in class. The students became the experts. The parents saw the skills their children were gaining and experienced their children in action as leaders. The workshop generated tremendous excitement about the upcoming performances. The December 7, 1941 project culminated with two performances, one for the school and one for the community, attended by the oral history informants. These shows were at least as exciting for the informants as for the students. It made their contributions seem more pointed and worthwhile. In journals the students kept during the project, many noted that they had begun looking at the older people of their community differently. Several noted they hoped to conduct the same process with their own grandparents to learn and preserve more old stories. I wonder what it looks like when we get there. I don't know, but I'm scared. I'm ready to go back to work. <laughs> We encourage the students to continue improvising, even in performance. No performances were ever stopped for mistakes, as the students worked their way through every problem that arose. Scenes that had gotten stuck in a few lines of dialogue became more fully realized in performance. Um, when we participated in the um, play, because then the, I faced my fear, because I'm not good at acting in front of a whole bunch of people. And I like working on the stage because we had like a full picture of what the play would look like. I also liked watching like when other people make mistakes. I learn from their mistakes and what I need to do better and stuff. I liked it when uh, we did the uh, sound effects because it really matches with the play. When like some of the people were absent, we had some of the other people like filled in their spots, like if they had a line, they would say the line, and then they, they would just continue the play. Okay. Henry, I'm sorry, but here's another bunch more laundry. I hate this job. Live and move. What are you doing? You're supposed to be washing the line. So boring. I'm not going to do it. I'm do this. Well, I can tell you all. No, they said I don't have to do it. That's my dirty suit. So I'm the provisions today. Well, I don't think that should go because I don't understand Yeah, but I can translate the words. Okay. 
It was the performances for their peers that underscored the importance of the project, how students can inspire and lead each other. More than a year later, the youngest students of the school still recall how much fun they had watching their older classmates perform and wonder whether they will have the chance when they are older. When learning is directed by the students themselves, their investment is deep. When they see how they can benefit from it, they become more interested in learning. This interest can then extend to their education. The memories of drama education projects stay with young people longer than memorized facts. They feel they have lived these experiences that they can now draw personal conclusions about the events and characters. The investment and emotional engagement of this kind of experiential learning prepares them for rich discussion and deeper learning. At first they were all individuals, yeah, but then they started working together. They worked together better and they helped each other make their parts better, you know, by analyzing and you know, being critical of each other. And then they worked to make their parts better. They practiced on their own. They worked at it. And then, um, they even helped make the whole a better, you know. Even when you were here, yeah, yeah. you would help them. And then they would work on their own and make it better. But they became better individuals because they were more um, open to each other. Mm -hmm. They understood each other better. And they know, knew they were working for a common co mm -hmm. co you know, cause. Mm -hmm. And did that make any transference into any other work that they did in class? Yes. They no. became better students. They became a closer Ohana. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. He helped me participate more in class. Okay. Like, not shame. Um, my speech, um, when we're having like, language class, we have to read our um, essays out loud to the class. Yeah. That made me read it out loud. It's like from um, working. Remember when we was at seen before? That in a play, you could, you could work together and teach that person, teach that person how to work together. Okay. And it brings more like, courage in your like mind because you can like um, say that you have been in a play and you're not afraid to do anything that you wish that you could. A project such as the December 7, 1941 project requires a large investment of time, energy, and resources. The investment, however, suggests powerful and lasting results that have the potential to enrich students in many and varied ways.